So uh, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. As you know, this is Dean Tenney, Series 7 guru. Uh, we're about to uh, embark on a journey on advanced option strategies. Uh, I don't know if anybody who's gonna, would, uh, going to be a registered option principal or sales supervisor is joining us, but it'll be appropriate uh, for you. I'll make a couple of comments along the way. Uh, that are unique to those exams in terms of uh, supervising or babysitting uh, sevens. Uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is the eighth and ninth option strategy you're held accountable for. Uh, I think where a lot of people get hung up is they think there's a zillion option strategies, and there's really not. I mean, not on Series 7 anyways. So if you've joined us for this sequence, the first one of these, and uh, Kavita told me she was listening to this uh, before that, is the basic option positions class we did three weeks ago where we discussed a long call, short call, long put, short put. And then the uh, second uh, class we did was on stock plus options. And the vast majority of your option questions on your Series 7 are going to be those five. Long call, short call, long put, short put, and covered calls. That's the vast majority of questions. Now, options are one of the few things that kind of builds. And then we talked about a protective put, and we talked about uh, don't be a dumb bear, don't just short the stock because that has unlimited risk and that's not very smart. And then uh, tonight we're going to talk about the two, two remaining strategies, which are straddles and spreads. As you see, I have them on the left-hand side here of the slide is speculative positions. What, what we mean by speculative is you don't have the stock. You may end up with the stock, but you don't have the stock. You're simply betting on the stock price. You're either selling volatility or you're buying volatility. And that's how these strategies kind of uh, break down. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do options, a lot of different ways to do options. And, you know, if we're doing basic options, one thing I recommend is the matrix. This is not a box with four squares. This is a matrix. And here's our two types of contracts, calls and puts. And you can either buy them or sell them. And so these are our four basic positions. And if you don't know anything about a short put and you've memorized the matrix, they say, what can you tell me about a short put? You say, Dean, when you're short a put, you've received the premium, you're bullish, your break-even strike price less premium, you're obligated by the stock at the strike price, your max gain is the premium, max loss is break-even to zero. You might not have any clue what you just said, but it's technically correct. So I would highly recommend that you uh, memorize the matrix. By the way, you only have to memorize this first quadrant because if you get this first quadrant down, if you get this first quadrant down, then you can unfold the rest of it. Right? You can say, okay, if I get that one down, I can unfold this thing because whatever I put over here, the opposite goes over there. So let's just review, let's just review as a beginning to this evening, a basic option position. This is not very smart. This is not very smart. You know, and the reason this isn't smart is you're being kind of a dumb bear. Now, what I suggest you do, again, what I suggest isn't testable. But uh, you need to have some kind of a process. And so what this is, is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. XP means strike price. And if you don't have the stock, if you don't have the stock, this is called a naked or uncovered call. And so what you're hoping here, what you're hoping is that the stock is 150 or lower. Because if the uh, stock is 150 or lower, the contracts expire and you get to keep the money. There's the floor. The problem with this position, there is no ceiling. You know, you have a little bit of a cushion here. What I mean by having a little bit of a cushion is even if this stock, Apple moves against you, even if it moves against you, you don't lose money until it goes past your break even of 162. Whoa. Strike price plus premium. So anywhere between 150, 162, you're a winner. But after 162, you start to lose some money. So, you know, uh, you're bearish. Your max gain is 12 points, or in this case, 10 contracts, $12,000. Uh, your max loss is unlimited. So what I would suggest you do, what I would suggest you do is put in a ceiling. You know, what you might want to do is some construction. You might want to take some of your 12 points and offset your obligation to sell with a choice to buy. 
you know, options are all about floors and ceilings, not testable, but again, floors and ceilings. So, you know, what I'm going to do here in a minute is I'm going to leg into a spread. I'm going to put in a ceiling here. I'm going to offset my obligation to sell with a choice to buy. And that's what a spread is about. A spread is the difference between the premiums. And our first test question is, can you identify a spread? And so here's all the things we're going to do on a spread. You have my guarantee that if you do these things, you've got the answer. So we're going to identify a spread, even if that wasn't a test question. I just told you it is. But even if it wasn't, it is. If you can't identify the spread, you don't know what to do next. You're going to be looking at the screen and going, I don't know, B. That's not what you need to be able to do. Now, once we've identified the spread, the next thing we're going to be doing is identifying if it's a credit spread or a debit spread. Do we have more money in than out? Or a debit spread, do we have more money out than in? Now, if we get that right, we can rock and roll because once we determine that, if it's a credit spread, we're going to know credit expire narrow. We want the contracts to expire so we can keep the money, neener, neener, neener. And we want the difference in the premiums to get smaller. You know, if I can net it, uh, close out the spread for less than I, I brought in, I'm going to win. That's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it. Goes together all the time. You know, credit has six letters. Expire has six letters. Narrow has six letters. If we get debit, we can rock and roll. If we get debit, then we can say, okay, we want the contracts to exercise. We want the contracts to widen. Mountain Dew, like just do the do. When you're wide like Dean, you need to exercise. The next thing we do after that is we're going to determine the max gain and max loss. Now, the whole point of a spread is I want to play between the difference in the strikes. All the action takes place between the strikes, between the floor and the ceiling, between the floor and the ceiling. We should know that if we collect money, if we sell a call, if we short a call, if we write a call, if we sell a put, we write a put, we uh, short a put, if we're short a, uh, a straddle, short a spread, when you collect money, the best case is you agree to be a potential victim, nobody victimizes you. You don't have to perform and you keep the money. And we should know that when you pay money, you buy a call, you buy a put, the worst case, you're going to lose the money. I'm going to show this all to you at length. I call this don't hate the eight. There's eight things we have to be able to do on a spread on our test. We have to be able to identify it, determine credit or debit, expire or exercise, narrow or widen, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. Now, the break even is going to have two memory aids that can help us. If it's a call spread, we're going to use call add to the lower. That's how we're going to determine the break even. And if it's a put spread, it's going to be put subtract from the higher. I'm going to show all this to you. This is kind of our menu. And the last thing we have to do is determine whether the spread is bullish or bearish. Where do I want the stock to be in relationship to that? And I have a cocktail party trick. It's just a trick, but it works all the time. So we're going to look at the larger premium, which dominates the position. But another way we can do it is with bulls. And bull stands for because you are long the lower strike price. So in any spread, if you are long the lower strike price, it is a bullish spread. All right, so let's get started here. Now, remember, we said this was not so smart. So by way of reminder, this is a dumb bear. Don't be a dumb bear. We're clear why that's a dumb bear? Because that bear could lose how much? Love you. Everything. So I'm going to be a smart bear. I'm going to do it be a smart bear and I'm putting in the ceiling. So first test question is, can you tell me on your series seven that what you're looking at is a spread? A spread is when you're long and short the same type of contract. Now, I like to put underneath this what this is. This is an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. XP means strike price. And then what I like to do, what Dean likes to do is not testable. As I then like to put up here, what if it's going on here? I have here a choice to buy the stock at the strike price. 
And as I said, all the action, all the action takes place between these strikes. You know, options, again, what Dean thinks is intestable, but uh, options are all about floors and ceilings. There's a floor here at 150, and there's a ceiling at 165. And so now Dean is a smart bear because I'm saying that I only want to play between those two prices. I only want to play between 150 and 165. And then I don't want to play no more. All right, there's my 165, and that's going to be my ceiling. All right, so as I said, we have to be able to do eight things on a spread. The first thing we have to be able to do is identify a spread. Spread always means difference. And the difference here is, uh, you know, what we're spreading. I say, what's the spread on the game? What's the difference in the scores? So this is a spread. This is a call spread. Now, the next thing we have to do is identify it as a credit or debit spread. Credit is when we have more money in than out. Debit is when we have more money out than in. So the way we do that is we're going to net the premiums. We're going to net the premiums. Is that $3 out or is that dollars in? Yeah. Is that $3 out or dollars in? out right on so we're gonna put out next to that i like to use uh dollars out dollars in but some people like to use pluses or minuses you know whatever floats your boat whatever floats your boat is that twelve dollars out or dollars in, in. So, in. that's dollars in and so when we net the spread net the premiums we find out that this is a credit spread this is a credit spread, and our credit here is nine. That's what we brought in. That is our net credit. And we said that's important because that's a lot of stuff flows from that. So let's just put underneath that 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 is a net credit. Now, the other way you could do that, there's lots of ways to do it. Uh, another way you could have done this is you could say, well, gee, you know, I could make my T. Right? If we make our T, you know, here's our T, dollars out versus dollars in. You know, when you are tracking money, again, I like to use dollars out, dollars in, but some people like to use pluses or minuses, you know, whatever floats your boat. I like to use dollars out. Some people like to use, uh, you know, debit. Some people like to use a minus sign. You know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, I like to use dollars in. Some people like to use credit. Some people like to use plus, whatever floats your boat. <clears throat> Whenever you have more than one thing going on, you got to be really disciplined in terms of doing this, right? So now I'm just going to label what I got going on here. Uh, by the way, a lot of work, but you know, the more work we do on the setup, the more work we do on the setup, the better we're going to be, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, getting the question right. So this work I would be doing would be done on my official scratch paper. Right, because in test phraseology, they'd say your customer goes short 10 Apple June 150 calls at 12, long 10 Apple June 165 calls at three. When Apple's at, you know, who cares? It doesn't matter where Apple's at when we do this trade. It matters where Apple's at when we close this trade out. And here's our 165s, right? And so now I, I highly recommend you too, you do things on a per share basis. Uh, this is going to be a mess if you put in 12,000 or 3,000. I suggest you do things on a per share basis. And here I'm just using the T again to net the premiums. That's all I'm doing here is using the T to do what we're doing here, which is netting the premiums. And we said that's pretty important. We said it's pretty important because that kind of drives uh, what's going on, right? So there's the same setup. So, so far in terms of our menu, we've only done two things. We've identified this as a spread. We have determined that it is a credit spread. Now, as I mentioned, once you get credit, you can rock and roll. Because credit expire narrow goes together all the time. How often does credit expire narrow go together? How often does that go together? All the time. So once we get this net credit, we can rock and roll. 
So once we get credit, now once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. But don't think about it until you get the menu done. We want the contracts to expire. We want the contracts to expire. How often will we be right? All the time. Now, let's just look at that and prove that's the case. If these contracts expire, if these contracts expire, you'd be a happy camper. Nine you'd say, good. Justine, I made nine points. I'm good. Yeah, P.S., I think you're kind of a jerk of a customer if you go, well, Dean, had I done the naked calls, I would have made 12. I wasted my money on the 165, so I could have made 12. I said, well, yeah, but you would have been naked. You could have made 12 and lose everything. That's not a good risk reward trade-off. Now, when we did the spread, when we did the spread, the difference in the premiums was nine. This is the hardest part to get. You don't need to get it. But what we're referring to is the difference in the premiums. If we close this out, we need to have less than nine. So for example, if we can close this out for seven, we're going to make two. That's the hardest part to get. <laughs> you don't need to get it because that goes together all the time. The most it could narrow to, the most it could narrow to is zero. When the contracts expire, right? Then the difference was nine and now it's zero and you get to keep the nine points. By the way, you should know that when you collect money, the best case is you agree to be a potential victim. Nobody victimizes you and you get to keep the money. So in a credit spread, the max gain test question is the net credit. That is our max gain. So that's nine points on 10 contracts. That's $9,000. I suggest you do things on a per share basis. You know, the whole point of the spread, the whole point of the spread is I'm saying that I want to play between these two prices, between 165 and 150, right? So, you know, we just said our max gain is going to be nine points. That's going to be our max gain. Now, boom, you know, by the way, the reason that's important is because there's two ways to proceed. You know, this is a good test-taking trick. We know we know that we are playing between these two numbers. So, you know, the gain and the loss of spread always equals the difference in the strikes, right? There's 15 points to be made or lost. There is 15 points to be made or lost. All right, so of those 15 points to be made or lost, we have collected nine points of that. Okay. They said the air quality is bad. Okay, so we have our game. So now if you don't know this, ugh, you know, if you don't know that nine plus something equals 15, then you have to memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less the net credit. I personally think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to say, okay, well, whatever the gain and the loss equals, it has to add up to 15, because that's the whole point of a spread. Whatever these two numbers are, they add up to 15, right? So remember this from grade school? Something plus, something plus nine equals 15. You know, the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. And by the way, it's absolute value here. Let me do that. Boom, 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 boom. Now, after you get the menu done, then you can think about it. Don't think about it till you get the menu done. But the worst case scenario here, the worst case scenario is I'm going to buy the Apple at 165 and I'm gonna deliver at 150. If I do that, I'm gonna lose 15 points. But what's in my account? Nine. 
So I lose six. Now on your test, you can eliminate any offer of gain and loss that doesn't add up to 15. So you can shop the answer set when they ask you max gain, max loss and say, okay, whatever these two numbers are, they have to uh, you know, add up. Okay, so we've got our gain and loss break even, another test taking trick. The break even is somewhere between 150 and 165. So you can shop your answer set on your exam and you can toss out any offer of a break even that isn't somewhere between 150 and 165. You remember our memory aid device for uh, doing break even and call spreads? What's our memory aid device for doing break evens in spreads? Yeah, it's Cal. Call, add to the lower. So we're going to take our lower strike, which is 150. Doesn't matter, by the way, if it's a debit or credit, doesn't matter. We're going to add the net premium, which is nine. And we get our break even of 159. Again, stay menu driven. Stay menu driven. But after you get this done, after you get this done, then you can say, okay, well, let me think about it. Don't think about it till you get the menu done. So I'll say, okay, well, if I buy the apple at 159 and I deliver at 150, I'd lose nine points. I have nine points. I break even. So 159 is my break even. People don't do things to break even. Is it bullish or bearish? That's our last thing we got to be able to determine. And the way we determine bullish or bearish is the larger premium dominates the position. The larger premium dominates the position. So the larger premium here is a short call. And short calls are bearish. We want the stock to be down from 159. All right, those are the eight things we have to be able to do on a spread. Let's just review. I'm showing you a credit call spread. And we said, here are our test questions. Don't hate the eight. Don't hate the eight. We said you have to be able to identify a spread. A spread is when you're long and short the same type of contract. This is a call spread. We said we have to be able to determine debit or credit. The way we do that is we net the premium. So we have three out, 12 in. So this is a nine point credit spread. We can do that, you know, next to the legs, not test, well, that's called leg. We can use a T, you know, however we want to go about it. Once we get credit, we can rock and roll because credit expire narrow goes together all the time. There's no circumstance in which you tell me it's a credit spread. You want the contracts to expire and the difference in the premiums to narrow that you will not be correct. Those that will always be the correct answer. That narrow is the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it. You know, that means the difference in the premiums. We have a net here of set nine, so we can close it out at six, we make three. We close it out at four, we make five. You know, I have entire separate videos where you can watch, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so now we uh, do the max gain and max loss. We said, whenever we collect money, the best case is we get to keep it. So, you know, again, we said this is smarter than a naked call. Anybody who does a naked call means they don't know about a credit call spread. Because a credit call spread is the way to be a smart bear and not lose everything, right? So that's why naked calls, we should say, don't do that. You know, there's no reason to be taking all that risk when you can do a credit call spread instead. So we said the whole point of a spread is you want to play between the two prices. You want to play between 150 and 165. All the action takes place between the strikes. So there's 15 points to be made or lost. Of that 15 points to be made or lost, you've collected nine. Nine plus something equals 15. That something is six. You know, I'm just putting those because it doesn't matter whether it's pluses or minuses. I like to use dollars out, dollars in. Some people like to use pluses or minuses. And our max loss here is six. We well, said we got to be able to do break even. We're going to use Cal. Call add to lower. Break even is 159. And we got to determine bullish or bearish, larger premium dominates. All right, so that's a credit call spread. So hint, hint, hint. Next, I'm going to show you a credit put spread. A credit put spread. Again, it's stupid to do a naked put. 
you know, one of my largest one-time losses a customer took, his name was Mark, is he sold uh, 10 240 puts naked. So he has an obligation to buy a thousand shares of the stock at 240. And, you know, he says, Dean, uh, I think it's going to be 240 or higher and the contracts will expire and I'll get to keep the $20,000. It was 20 points on 10 contracts. I said, Mark, what I would highly recommend you do is take some of your money and buy a lower strike put. That way, if it does blow up and somebody sticks it to you, you can stick it to the next guy. And instead of doing a short put, why don't you do a credit put spread? He goes, ah, yeah, I don't want to do that. You know, the thing blew up on him. You know, he had to buy a thousand shares at 240, and then he didn't have any kind of an option contract where he could offset. All right, so again, here's our menu. Here's our menu. Uh, again, what we're trying to have to be able to do on the spread is eight things. We have to identify the spread. We have to determine credit or debit. Right now, I'm showing you credit spreads. So if you had to guess what I'm going to show you next, what am I going to be showing you next? Debit spreads, right? So once we get this, we can rock and roll. If we get credit, we know credit expire narrow. You know, some people like to say, well, gee, Steen, credit has six letters. Expire has six letters. Narrow has six letters. They all go together. If we get debit, we can rock and roll because we know debit exercise widen. We know that the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. You know, last time, last time, we had a credit of nine. And we said that whatever these two numbers are, they have to add up to the difference in the strikes. And so we said nine plus something in our last one equaled 15. And so the max loss was six. So again, if you don't get that, then you got to memorize that the maximum loss on credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that uh, credit. Looks like I have a typo in my menu here that should lay say less than that credit. Okay, so break even, cal or push, and then we're going to determine bullish or bearish. So here we go again. Now, this is a basic option position. There's our matrix again. You know, in our last one, by the way, if we're trying to figure out what is going on, it's the larger premium that dominates the position. And over here, as you recall, we were a 13, I think, or 12, whatever it was. And over here, we were a two, so that was a bearer spread. So if you're trying to decide what quadrant you're playing in, it's the larger premium that dominates the position. All right, this is just a basic option position. This is just a basic option position. You know, and I'm hoping that you are capable of knowing contract specifications, that you know that this is an obligation to buy the stock at the strike price. That's what we're hoping that you can figure out. This is an obligation to buy the stock at the strike price. And you know what I don't like about the position is that if I'm wrong, somebody's going to stick it to me at 150. And the worst case would be the stock is worthless and I pay 150 for worthless stock. You know, I have a little bit of a cushion here. My break even is 150 minus 13. This is a basic option position. And so my break even here is 150 minus 13, 137. And uh, I don't like this position. What I don't like about this position is all the risk I have. So what I would like to do here is offset my obligation to buy with a choice to sell. XP means strike price. Pretty cool, right? If I had that, you know, I'm going to do construction. Construction costs money. Construction costs money. And again, what I'm saying here is I don't want to have all this exposure. You know, without the spread, my ceiling is 150, 150 or higher. Contracts have no intrinsic value. They expire and I keep the money. Neener, neener, neener. But there is no floor. The floor is zero. So I decide what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a spread where I say, okay, I only want to play between 150 and 135 or 150 and 130. That's what a spread is all about. The spread is the difference in the premiums. So one test question is to turn this into a spread. Test question number one, identification. Dean is going to have to go long a put because the spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. Long and short, the same type of contract. So let's go ahead and leg into a spread. Not testable, this is a leg. 
in advanced option strategies, we're going to have more than one leg. We're going to have a multiple option strategy where we have more than one thing going on. There's our menu again. There's our menu again. Uh, I'm noticing that I have a typo in the maximum loss. It's the difference in the strikes less than that credit. Uh, anyways, here we go. So I'm saying that I only want to play between 150 and 135, and then I don't want to play no more. All the action takes place between the strikes. So there's 15 points to be made or lost. Now, again, in terms of process, you can do whatever you'd like. You know, I highly recommend that what you do in terms of process is on your official Prometric scratch paper, you write, what are you looking at? And what you're looking at is an obligation, by the way, particularly on puts, because puts are really, you know, mess people up. You have an obligation to buy the stock at the strike price. That's what that leg is. So you have an obligation to buy the apple here at 150. And being the smart person you are, you say, you know, let me do some construction. Let me offset my obligation to buy the stock with a choice to sell the stock. Boom. So test question number one, are you looking at a spread? Are you looking at a straddle? Are you looking at a butterfly? Are you looking at a condor? Are you looking at a flamingo? What are you looking at? Test question, you are looking at a spread. What is the next thing we have to do? Once we've identified the spread, what is our next test issue? Is it a debit or a credit? Is it a debit spread or a credit spread? How do we determine whether it's a debit or a credit spread? How do we determine whether it's a debit or a credit spread? The strike prices. Well, not the strike prices. I mean, prices. the premiums. I'm sorry. The premiums. No, that's okay. no, don't be sorry. No, that's what, what you're, you're know. bringing in, what you're putting out. What's that's more? right right on, Jeffrey. What we're going to do is we're going to net the premiums. We're going to net the premiums. So is that 13 money out or money in? And, is oh, you money too. No, that the, 13 is money in. Right? When you're short an option, that's money in. So we got 13 in. Is that two money in or money out? Is that two money out or money in? Out. Out. That's money out. And so when we net those two numbers, remember we have more money in than out. It is a credit spread. And if we have more money out than in, it is a debit spread. So is this a debit or a credit spread? Is this a debit or a credit spread? This is a credit spread. We've established this spread for a net credit of 11. A net credit of 11. Okay, now once we get credit, once we get credit, uh, we can rock and roll. Once we give credit, we can rock and roll. Because once we've established that it is a net credit, do we want the contracts to expire or exercise? It's Exer nice. Always. You'll be right how often. Now, don't think about it till we get the menu done. What I mean by that is, you know, don't be thinking about it, but if this is the position in your brokerage account and I call you and say both these contracts expired, you would be a happy camper because you get to keep the money. Now, even if they don't expire. Yep. Yeah, question? No, I was just quoting that commercial. Expired. Yeah. yeah. And then widen or narrow. What do we want? Widen or narrow? Narrow. How Narrow. Often, yeah, how often will we be right? We'll be right every time. So that always goes together. Credit expired narrow. That's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it. When we established this, we did so for a net credit of 11. So if I can close it out for seven, I make four. 
If I can close it out for, you know, five, I make six. That's the net difference in the premiums when we open and when we close. If it gets larger, widens, I'm going to lose. If I have to close it out, it costs me 12, I'm going to lose one. So that's the hardest part to get, but we don't need to get it because credit expire narrow goes together all the time. Now, when you collect money, when you collect money, the best case is you agree to be a potential victim and nobody victimizes you. You get to go neener, neener, neener. So the max gain in a credit spread is the credit. You know, 150 or higher, both contracts expire and you keep the money. So we got our max gain. We said, what is the max gain and the max loss always add up to? What does it always add up to? The difference in the strikes. That's the whole point of a spread. The whole point of the spread is I'm saying I want to play between 150 and 135, and then I don't want to play no more. Right? That's kind of what's going on here. In terms of my visual over here, my visual, here's my visual. There's no graphing, but some people are visual. Oh. Right, so I can make 11, and we said whatever the gain and the loss is, we said it adds up to the difference in the strikes. So test question, you can add to chop your answer set on your exam and eliminate any two numbers that don't add up to 15. So remember this from grade school? 11 plus something equals 15. What is that something? Four. Four. You know, that's going to be our max loss. You know, let's just put that in there. Boom. Let's make a little thing here. Max loss. Let's put it in a smaller font. Boom. And we said that, 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 you know, if you don't get that, by the way, here's our difference in our strikes. I said, what's well, kind of a mental mess, I think, you know, what Dean thinks is intestinal. But, you know, if you don't get that, oh, my goodness. Then I told you that if you don't get that for the max loss, you're going to have to memorize, you know, I just think it's the middle mass. You're going to have to memorize that the maximum loss is the difference in the strike prices minus the debt uh, net premium. I just think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to say, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost, right? And I got 11 of that, so I can make four. I just think that's easier, you know, but however you get there, you need to get there. So remember, we said there's eight things you got to be able to do in a spread. And we said that what you have to be able to do in a spread is you have to identify it. That's our first test question. We've identified this as a spread. The second test question, we have to determine credit or debit. We've determined credit. The third thing we have to be able to do is tell me on the test, do you want contracts to expire or exercise? We've said expire. The fourth thing we have to do is, do we want the difference in the premiums to narrow, get smaller, or get widened, get larger? And we said narrow. The fifth thing we got to be able to do is the max gain. That credit spread, it's the credit. The sixth thing we have to be able to do is the max loss. Test taking trick, we said the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. Always, always, always. By the way, it doesn't matter if that's a debit or credit. It's just whatever those two numbers are. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is break even. So we're on item number seven, break even. So we're going to use cow or push. Are we going to use cow or push for our break even? We're going to use our memory aid device is push. And that stands for put, subtract from the higher. Put, subtract from the higher. So our two memory aid devices are cow and push. Cal and push. By the way, test taking trick. We know that whatever the break even is, it's somewhere between these two numbers. So you can shop your answer set on your test and you can toss out anything above 150 or anything. You know, it can't be any number that's above there and it can't be any number that's below here. That alone on your exam will get you a 50 50. You know, whatever this is, it has to be somewhere between these two numbers. As we said, this stands for. Put, subtract from the higher. Put, subtract from the higher. And so here, uh, we're going to take our higher strike. 
and our higher strike is 150. And we're going to subtract from that the net premium, which is 11. And we get our break even of, uh, I'm using my calculator because my arithmetic skills are terrible. And God knows Dean doesn't want to give up questions because I can't do arithmetic. And so our break even is 150 minus 11, which is 139. Boom. And again, we said we know that it's uh, within these two numbers here. Let's put it over here. Now, again, don't, you know, don't think about it until you get the menu done. Once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. If I buy the stock at 139 and I get put the stock at 150, so I pay 150 for stock that's worth 139. I lose 11 points. I got 11 points. I break even. You know, that's the break even. I'm just illustrating that indeed that is the break even. The last thing we got to be able to do is determine bullish or bearish. In other words, where do we want the stock to be in relationship to the break even? You know, do we want it above or below th that number? So how, how do we determine whether a spread is bullish or bearish? How do we determine whether a spread is bullish or bearish? The larger premium larger dominates the position, right? And the larger premium here is a short put. And so that's important because that helps us now know that this is a bullish spread, that we want the stock to go up so we can keep the money. And that's what we got to be able to. Now, by the way, we also could have used our trek bulls because you're along the lower strike. And so we could have done that as well. All right. So we said there's eight things you got to be able to do in a spread. Don't hate the eight. Don't hate the eight. We said the eight things you have to be able to do a spread is you have to be able to identify a spread. If you can't identify a spread, you're kind of stuck. You should know a spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. So we identified this as a spread. We're long and short, the same type of contract. We said the next thing we have to be able to do is credit or debit. And the way we do that is we net the premiums. And we established that this was a credit spread. And now once we get credit, we can rock and roll. Because if it's a credit spread, we want the contracts to expire, the premiums, the contracts, so we can keep the money. And we want the difference in the premiums to get smaller, narrow, hardest part to get. We got to know max gain, max loss. Whenever we sell options, the best case is we get to keep the money. We said the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So this difference in the strikes here is 15. We've collected 11, so we can lose four. Now, if you don't get that, then you get to memorize, look, that the maximum loss and credit spread is the difference in the strikes minus the net credit. I just think it's a mental mess. The difference in the strikes 15 minus 11, that's four. We got to be able to do break even. We got two memory aid devices, cow and push. Cow is in a call spread, call add to the lower, and a put spread, put subtract from the higher. This is a put spread, so we're going to take the higher strike, which in this case is 150, and we're going to subtract from that 150 the net premium of 11 to get our break even of 139. And then the last thing we have to be able to do is determine whether the spread is bullish or bearish. This is a bullish spread because short put is the dominant leg. By the way, it'll always be the higher strike put that is dominant because higher strike puts always have greater premiums. So even if the premiums were missing, I would know the 150 is dominant. Lower strike calls are always dominant because they have a greater premium. Okay, so I showed you a credit call spread. I've shown you a credit put spread. So what do you think I'm going to show you next? What do you think I'm going to show you next? If I've shown you a credit spreads, debits. that's right. I'm going to show you a debit spread. I'm going to show you a debit call spread and a debit put spread. Uh, we got to be able to do eight things. We're going to do the eight things once again. And uh, before we do, let's just look at a basic option position. There's our matrix. Uh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. But I don't have 13 points. Now that's 10 contracts. So that's 13 points. I, again, we do per share, but that's 10 contracts. So that's $13,000. And I don't have $13,000. So 
it doesn't look like Neem's going to be able to play. Yeah, because I don't have the price of admission here, which is 13 points. Uh, on my break even, oh my goodness, I need 13 points of upward volatility. You know, when you buy an option, you got to be right about three things. Direction, here I'm choosing up. I got to be right about how far up, at least 13 points to cover my out-of-pocket cost. And I got to be right about the timing. If I'm wrong about any of those three things, I'm going to be a loser. You know, it's kind of hard to make money, right? Because I got to get the trifecta. So I, you know what I think? I go, you know what? Why don't I sell the higher strike calls to pay for the lower strike calls? Again, the conversation is intestinal. You know, if I can lower my price of admission from 13 down to something more reasonable, maybe I'll be able to play. Because, you know, I just told you, I don't have 13 points. And if I lower my out-of-pocket cost, the conversation is not testable. I would also uh, lower the amount of volatility that I would need. That would be cool. You know, I can draw the break even a little closer to me, so I won't need as much upward volatility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the higher strike calls to pay for the lower strike calls. So test question number one, this is a spread. And we said, it's all about the floor and the ceiling. You know, all the action takes place between the strikes. So for illustration, you slop and put the short above the long. That's just the way for the math so that you can do straightforward versus doing it upside down, right? Um, I'm not quite sure I understood that. You, you went, you you were initially long, and then above that, you wrote the short pen. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they get. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, I do like to stack the legs here. So yeah, it, I like. Good point, Jeffrey. So let's put this in test phraseology. Uh, your customer uh, goes long ten apples September 150 calls at 13, and shorts ten apples September 165 calls at seven. What apples at 154? Who cares? That doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter where Apple's at when we do the trade. Then your point, Jeffrey, indeed. What I like to do is now put that on my scratch. And I do like to stack my legs uh, yeah. in the way that does make it a little easier for me. So just as, as your point, let me just go to your point here. You, it's not a coincidence every time I'm doing that because it just makes my analysis easier. Yep. Right. So your point, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. I wouldn't put the 165 on the 150. You know, I'm going to put the lower strike call and then I'm going to stack that just to make my analysis a little easier. So indeed, indeed, that's what I'm doing. Good question. That's why I like classes, you know? You, you know, a lot of people say, what do you say about for the class? I can watch Dean's videos on replay. I go, yeah, but, you know, there's something to be said for Jeffrey asking a good question like that. And then, you know, pr process and being able to, you know, talk to each other. I just, you know, I'm a, a big fan of having a, a live class. So that's indeed what I did. Let's get back to where we were. There we go. Uh, I put in again, so this is a uh, floor and a ceiling here. The ceiling now, not testable, but I think of options being about floors and ceilings. Uh, the ceiling is 165 now. So remember, all the action takes place between the strikes. Now, if you need to, too, I would really hope that you get good at contract specifications. What I mean by that is you're not struggling at some point that that is a choice or right to buy the stock at the strike price. You know, if you get good at uh, contract specifications and then you can track money in and out of an account, you're going to get, uh, you know, get pretty good at options, right? And so here is our floor. You know, 150 or lower contracts expire. And here is our ceiling. As we said, all that action takes place between the strikes. Okay, so uh, again, the conversation isn't testable. What is uh, testable is to be able to identify this. Is this a, a butterfly? Is this a flamingo? Is this a combination? Or is this a spread? This is a spread. A spread is when you're long and short, the same type of contract. This is a spread. What's our next thing we have to be able to do? Determine debit or credit, debit or credit. How do we determine debit or credit? What's, what's more coming in? Yeah, we're gonna net the premiums, right? We're gonna net the premiums to establish whether it's a credit spread, more money in than out. If we get credit, we can rock and roll. Credit expire narrow and we got our gain. 
And if it's a debit, we can rock and roll. So is that seven, is that seven money out or money in? Is that seven money out? In. Or um, money in? Yeah, no, that's money in. Yep. Short. Yep. And okay, so is that, uh, let's do the next one. Is that 13, is that money out or money in? Out. It's out because you were saying you didn't have it. That, yeah, that's true. Don't tell anybody. I said, don't tell anybody. No, Jesus. But that's the whole point here. I lowered, again, the conversation is decibel, Jeffrey, but I lowered my out-of-pocket cost. Dean's a player now. I lowered my out-of-pocket cost from 13 to six. That's not bad. That's bueno, right? That's bueno because losing six is less painful than losing 13. There's a lot of reasons that's going to be a good deal. Uh, again, the conversation is intestable. What is testable is this is a debit spread. And the debit, what is the debit here? Six. Yeah, six. This is our net debit. And, you know, that's important because, you know, once we get that, we can really kind of start rocking and rolling, right? So there's our net debit of six. Let's put that in here. Don't you kind of give yourself the answer if you put the, um, like you said, obligation to sell the stock at the strike price that gives you whether it's in or out right so if you know that then you oh absolutely know absolutely so absolutely so if you if you know that obligations are money in and choices are money out absolutely that's contract specifications right I just yeah. all right you're right Madison right nobody's going to agree to be a potential victim unless you pay pay me so if you want me to deliver that stock to you at 165 I said what are you going to give me for that you say, I'll give you seven. I go, cool. I could use that seven. I can use that seven to pay for my what? My 150s, right? So yeah, if you get good at contract specifications and you can track money, you're going to get 100% on options. Now, the net main thing here though, is we've established that this is a net debit because we're netting the premiums. And that's really important because remember, once we get that, we can really kind of rock and roll. Right, because once we get net debit, we can really rock and roll. When you know debit, let's make that a little bigger. So if this is a net debit, which it is, do we want the contracts to expire or exercise? Do we want the contracts? To, we want them to. Now, by the way, stay menu driven. What I mean by that is don't think about it until you get the menu done. But once you get the menu done, then you can say, well, let me see. If this Madison is the contracts in your account, and I call you and I say, Madison, you know those contracts in your account? They got to exercise. You go, geez, Dean, what does that mean? I said, well, Madison, that means you bought the stock at 150 and you sold the stock at 165. Are you happy or sad? I'm so happy. And what'd you make? Lots of money. Well, you didn't make 15 six. because you, yeah, you didn't make 15 because you got to pay for your ticket, right? Your ticket cost you six, right? So yeah. our next thing. When you're wide like Dean, you need to exercise. Do the do, Mountain Dew, just do it. Debit exercise widen goes together all the time. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it. But what we're referring to is the difference in the premiums. We need them to get larger. Now, because when you buy options, you got money out of pocket. So, you know, you need volatility. It's your friend. But don't get need to get it because that goes together how often? All the time. Now, when you pay money, the worst case is you lose it. You know, so as long as this is $6, you can afford to lose Madison. No problem. That's six points or, you know, there's 10 contracts. So that's actually $6,000. But, you know, we do things on a per share basis. And anytime you buy an option position, what's the worst case is you lose your money. Very easy to qualify somebody who wants to buy an option. Is this money you can afford to what? To lose. Now, Jeffrey, losing six is better than losing 13. Right? So break there's a couple nine. Yeah, well, break even is not going to be nine. The break is going to no. be one. 56. We'll do that. Stay menu driven. Okay. <laughs> the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. 
the gains and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. That's the whole point of a spread. Is I'm saying that I want to play between 150 and 165, and then I don't want to play no more. Test taking trick. If they offer me gain or loss, I can eliminate anything offered to me that doesn't add up to 15. Because we said the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strike. So if that 15 points to be made or lost, we have collected or spent, excuse me, six of it. So we have uh, spent six. And so six plus something equals 15. Now, if you don't get that, then you got to memorize yuck. You got to memorize that the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less the net debit. I think it's easier to say, okay, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. And so that means I can make nine. I just think that's easier. But however you get there, you need to get there. So let's put that in green because that's going to be our max law, uh, gain here. Oh, come on. So for a debit call spread, the net premium, I guess, or like the net debit is also the maximum loss. Yeah, and that's Madison really cool because that means you can rock roll. I think on a credit spread, Madison, the easiest thing to get is the gain mm -hmm. credit. And on a debit spread, I think the easiest thing to get is the loss. And so the reason that's important is because your point, right? Anytime you have money out, there's your loss and then you just flip it and that's going to be your gain is going to be the other version, right? So that's why I think that's really kind of a fun thing to be able to do or... Because if you can do that, if you get that, Madison, then you don't have to memorize that the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I think it's easier for me to say, okay, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. There's 15 points to be made or lost. And I spent six. So there's my six. Whoop, let me uh, get my six back here. So boom, I don't need uh, any more, Jeffrey. I don't need uh, 13 points up. To cover my out-of-pocket cost, I'm only going to need six points up. And as we said, it's easier for the stock to go up six than it is for the stock to go uh, you know, up 13. And so there we go, right? The two numbers always add up to the difference in the strikes. That's a test-taking trick, by the way. You could chop the answer set, and you can eliminate anything that doesn't add up to 15. Now, remember, I'm using pluses or minuses. I don't like to use pluses or minuses because you got to be real consistent. But, you know, it's the absolute value of those numbers, right? So you're out six, both. Okay, are we going to use Cal or push for our break even? Cal. Cal. Remember, what does Cal stand for? Call add lower. Yeah, right on. So, Jeffrey, you told me the break even was 159. I could see how you could get that because of that. I didn't do bracket on my six. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You know, but at least, you know, I don't worry about when there's a way somebody messes it up and I can kind of see that. I get worried, Jeffrey, when somebody screwed it up in some way I've never seen. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I don't know where you're at. So, remember that what this stands for is call add to the lower. So, we're going to take the lower strike and your point, Jeffrey, not lower on the, you know, the whiteboard. I mean the lower on the strike, right? So the lower strike here is uh, 150. So we're going to take 150 and we're going to add the net premium. Doesn't matter whether it's a debit or credit. In this case, it's a debit, doesn't matter. And it's 156. And by the way, test taking trick, we know we can eliminate on the test anything offered to us as a break even that isn't somewhere between those two numbers. So as again, test taking trick, you get a 50-50 by just shopping the answer set and eliminating anything offered to you that is not in between 150 and 165. Now, once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. So if I buy the stock at 150, which I have a choice to do, and I sell at 156, I make six, I spend six, I break even. Nobody does things to break even. Our last thing we have to be able to do is determine bullish or bearish. How do we determine bullish or bearish? The bigger. Higher. Larger premium. Right on, the larger premium. So that's a, a bullish spread, meaning we want this thing to go up. Now, remember, you could also use because you're long the lower strike. 
And by the way, the lower strike is always going to be the dominant premium. So you should have been able to tell me that. You know, I'm wishing for you guys a dream draw. A dream draw is everything you studied shows up and you go, man, you know, I don't know what the big deal was. And then, you know, there's a face of death draw where you go, oh my God, you know, I just got to slog my way through this thing. Uh, here, I should be able to tell that this is still a bullish spread because the lower strike call is always going to have the greater premium. And so, you know, if I'm buying it, it's going to be bullish. And if I'm selling it, it's going to be bearish. So, you know, one of those things that keep in the back of your mind is lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums. So we could do it that way or we could use the trick, bulls, bulls. Okay, so we said there's eight things we got to be able to do on a spread. Don't hate the eight. If you do my eight things, so again, Jeffrey, too, I'm suggesting you don't even look at the question they're asking until you have practiced, drilled, and rehearsed this. And then you have my guarantee that if you go back to the question, whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. So if I'm looking at my question, it says you're long 10 apples, September 150 calls at 13, short 10 apples, September 165 calls at seven. When apples at, who cares? Period. So period means now I'm going to do my setup. I'm going to go to my official scratch paper. Uh, I'm going to put my things down there and I'm going to say, okay, before I even look at the question, Dean promised me that if I did these eight things, whatever they want to know, I'm going to have the answer. So I'm going to make my analysis. I'm going to say, okay, I'm looking at a spread. Uh, I got to be able to determine debit or credit. I'm going to net the premiums. This is a debit spread. Your point, Madison, once I get that, I can rock and roll because I know debit exercise widen and I know my loss. So that's really key piece of the analysis. Once you get it there, you rock and roll. We said there's eight things. And so, man, now you only got max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. You're halfway to all the answers. We said the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strike. So test taking trick, we can toss out anything offered to us that doesn't add up to 15. That's the whole point of the spread. For the max gain, we can either memorize oh, that the maximum gain is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I personally think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to say, well, there's 15 points to be made or lost. And of the 15 points to be made or lost, we spent six. So that means we can make nine. Then we have to be able to do our, our break even. We're going to use CAL. CAL stands for call add to the lower. Boom, break even. And last thing, bullish or bearish. All those things. Okay, so I've shown you a credit call spread. I've shown you a credit put spread. I've shown you a debit call spread. So what do you think I'm showing you next? I have a quick question. Of course. Um, it might be a stupid question, but there no aren't any question. stupid questions. There are no stupid questions because your career is at risk. <laughs> uh, um, so does anything change? Like, let's say if it was um, short 10 Apple September 150 calls, like vice versa, does anything change? Should it be like the 150s above and 165s below? No, it's still 15. No, I think that's fun. Let's have some fun. Uh oh. Okay, so boom. <laughs> So you ask, would anything change? So let's just change it. And I'll change it on the fly, which is never a good idea, but you know, what the heck, we'll work without a net. And so the change would be, the change would be now that this is the one I'm long. And this is the one I'm short. Right, that would be, is that still a spread? It is. Mm -hmm. But now, is it a debit or a credit spread? Probably credit, right? Yeah, it's, if it was credit debit yeah it's a credit spread, right? Because now we have more money in than what? Out. Out. Do we want the contracts to uh, exercise or expire now? Exer uh, expire. Expire. Right. Widen or narrow? Narrow. Uh, max gain. That's right. Max gain is going to be the six that you collected. Oh. Uh right? Your max loss is going to be the nine. The worst case now is you're going to buy the stock at 165. You don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. You're going to deliver at 115. You're going to lose 15 points. You don't want to do that. Okay. That would be a loss, right? And by the way, this is smarter than doing the naked calls. So we got our uh, thing. Uh, we're going to use Cal or push for the break even. Cal? It's the same break even. It's just that this is bearish, not bullish. So it's still 156. 
And remember, larger premium dominates the position, and it's always going to be the lower strike call that is the dominant position. So now it's a short call. And so the spread is not no longer bullish. The spread is now what? Bear. Bearish, right? So those are all the things we have to do, right? Okay. So okay. Indeed. that makes sense. Yeah. You know, but what happens with options is lights go on and they go out again. You know? This is making more sense to me than um, like the hedging for whatever reason. Well usually, well, usually people either get the speculative and not the hedges or the hedges and not the speculative. So, you know, that's one of our, I think one of our binary things we want to be able to do as a test taker is kind of look at it and say, is this somebody who's speculating or is this somebody who's hedging? Right. Because those are different, you know, players completely. Well, again, Jeffrey, don't tell anybody. But Dean doesn't have 13 points. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to play if I don't have 13 points on 10 contracts. That's 13 grand. We're doing this per share. But so I say, damn, you know, that's not that's not bueno. Uh, <laughs> looks like I'm a loser. You know, uh, I also don't like that. My break even is, uh, you know, I, what, I need 13 points of downward volatility. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the lower strike puts. The conversation is not testable to pay for the higher strike puts because Jeffrey, maybe if I can lower my out-of-pocket cost, I can still play. You know, key point, we're not lending you money to buy options. So if you don't have 13 points, you're not going to be able to do this. So what I'm going to do is a spread. Test question number one is identification. So a spread is when I'm long and short, the same type of contract. So if Dean is long the put to create the spread, I'm going to have to do what? Short. Yeah, so I'm going to short a put. I'm going to create a spread. There's our menu again. Uh, for those who are watching the replay, I know there's a typo. I get kind of worked up when people start sending me all kinds of emails. Oh, there you are. all messed up. So let's just get rid of that. I'll just fix that. <laughs> you know, boom. So that's our menu that we're working on. That's our menu that we're working on. And so let's now do the last of our spread positions. So here's our last spread. Uh, that I'm going to show you, and then we'll do straddles, and we'll call it a night. All right, so uh, we have to identify this as a spread. Now, your point, uh, Madison, uh, I think you should know. I'm, I'm not sure if I was correct in what you said here, but I think you said, well, wouldn't a choice to sell the stock at the strike price, wouldn't that choice always be money out? And the answer is yes. And choices cost money. If you want to have a right, R-I-G-H-T, or you want to have a choice, that's going to cost you some money. Choices cost money. And so we're going to have a choice to sell, particularly on puts. I really believe you should do this because the puts are the ones that throw people for a loop. And then this is an obligation to uh, buy the stock at the strike price. And you should know that that's going to be money in because that's what it is, right? You don't agree to be a potential victim unless somebody gives you some money. Okay, so I'm just doing my setup here. And the longer we can, uh, you know, work on our setup, you know, we said the whole point of a spread is you want to play between these two numbers. Boom. And your point, Jeffrey, I actually did strike uh, stack those. Uh, here, oh my goodness, 30 points, right? There's a 30 point uh, gap there. So there's 30 points to be made or lost. There's a ceiling at 150, 150 or higher, contracts expire. And there's a floor at 120. Okay, so uh, we've only done one of the eight test questions. We've said that this is a spread. So what's the next thing we got to do once we've identified the spread? What's our next thing? Debit or credit. Right on. So how are we going to determine uh, debit or credit? No. Money out versus money. what? So is that 13? Is that money out? Yep. Or is that money in? Money in because you're selling. No. Oh, oh, no. Oh, good. Puts are the ones that throw people. Oh. You buy a put dollars out. You've established the choice to sell the stock dollars in. No. So if you exercise the put, it would be dollars in if you exercise. But to have a choice to sell, that's going to be dollars out. You paid 13 points for a choice to sell the stock at 150. It's okay. I tell you, I, mean, I don't get it. I, I buy it to sell it. Those are different ends. When you buy a put contract dollars out, you are establishing the choice to sell the stock 
$6 in. All right, chance to redeem yourself. Is that $6 out or dollars in? Gotcha again, it's dollars in. I got when, you, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> when you sell a put, when you sell a put, you are have dollars in, but you've obligated yourself to buy the stock, dollars out. When you're short a put, it's dollars in, but you're obligated to buy the stock, dollars out. So they're different ends. Okay, so again, choice and long means dollars out and short obligation means money in. Okay, so we're on our second item. Our second testable item was, is it a debit or a credit? And the way we do that is net the premium. So is this a debit or is this a credit spread? Debit. This is a debit. So Jeffrey, Dean can play because I have $7. I don't have 13, but I got seven, right? That's what I got. When we net those two numbers, right? That's how we establish whether it's a debit or a credit. You know, we said again, I'm playing between 150 and 130. All the action takes place between the strikes. All the action takes place between the strikes. So there's, you know, 30 points here to be made or lost. So I'm going to put that there. There's my 130. That's my strike price there. 120. Oh, thank you. I was just seeing if you're paying attention. <laughs> Uh, 120, and there's my floor. Okay, so we've determined that it's a debit uh, spread. So once we've determined that it is a debit spread, do we want the contracts to exercise or expire? Exercise. Exercise. How often will you be right? Every time. Yes. Right now, again, once you get the menu done, then you can think about it say, okay, if these are the uh, contracts in your account, Madison, and I call you and say they got exercised, I mean, somebody made you buy the stock at 120. You said, damn, Dean, I got to buy the stock at 120. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're the put E, Madison, at 120, but you're the put er at 150. That's going to be bueno. If you pay 120 and you sell at 150, you make that's 30 everything. points less than whatever it costs to get rolling. So that's uh, excellent. That will be great. Widen or narrow? Widen or narrow? Do you want the difference in the premiums to get bigger? Widen or do you want them to narrow? Do you want them to widen? How often will you be right? All the time. All the time. The hardest part to get, don't need to get it. It's the difference in those premiums. So if we can close this for 15, we make eight. 20, we make 13. So, you know, that's what we do. Now, uh, I always like to say, okay, well, let's put our things here. Let's get uh, busy here. There's 30 points. And remember, anytime you pay money, anytime you pay money, that is going to be your max loss. So when you buy a call, you buy a put, you buy a straddle, you buy a spread, you know, that's going to be your worst case scenario is that you're going to lose your premium. And we said that the gain and the loss in a spread always equals the difference in the strikes. So there is 30 points to be made or lost. And of that 30 points to be made or lost, you have spent seven. So of those uh, numbers to be made or lost, you have spent seven. So remember this, seven plus something, seven plus something equals 30. The maximum gain here is 23 points. Now you can either say, okay, well, there's 30 points to be made or lost. I spend seven, or you can memorize, yuck. You can memorize that the maximum gain in a debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I just think that's a mental mess. But you know, however you get there, you need to get, get there. Whoop, that's max gain. Okay, so we've identified it. We've determined uh, debit or credit. We determined exercise or expire. We turned widen or narrow. We've got our max gain, max loss. So now we need our break even. Are we gonna use cow or push, push. for the break even? 
Which memory aid device are we using for break even? Cal or push? Push. And remember what that memory aid device stands for? Put, subtract from, put, subtract V higher. That's right. That's exactly what that memory aid device is about. So we're going to take the put. It's a put spread. We're going to subtract. You know, put down. It's always put down and call up, almost always. There's a couple exceptions to that, but almost always. So put, subtract from the higher. And so the higher strike here is 150. And we're going to subtract from that higher strike the net premium. Doesn't matter where it's a debit or credit. Doesn't matter the absolute value of whatever that is. In this case, seven. And we get our break even of 143. Uh, P.S. Jeffrey, it's easier for the stock to go down seven points than it is for the stock to go down 13 points. So not testable, but in the debit spread, that's kind of cool because I have actually uh, brought the break even closer to me. I don't need as much volatility now to break even. Uh, last thing we got to be able to do, the last thing we got to be able to do is determine uh, whether it's bullish or bearish. Where do we want this to be if, in relationship to? The break even. So, how do we determine bullish or bearish? How do we determine bullish or bearish in a spread? Your higher premium. Yeah. So, we look here and we go, okay, boom. The higher premium is a long put, and that means this is a bearish spread. You know, debit put spreads are bearish, meaning I want the stock to go down. I need to go down from the break even. Now, there's our break even 143. I need it down from that. All right, so we said there's eight things you got to be able to do in a spread. Don't hate the eight. Don't hate the eight. We said you have to identify it as a spread. Even if that wasn't a test question, I just told you it is. But even if it wasn't, you know, if you can't identify, you don't know what to do next. So we've identified it as a spread. We said the next thing we got to do is determine debit or credit. We do that by netting the premiums, and we established that this was a debit spread, a seven-point debit spread. Again, we do it on a per share basis. So that's 7,000. But you know, when we're doing our analysis, we do it per share. So it's a seven point debit spread. Once we get that, we can rock and roll, Madison, right? Because your point, once we get that, we know our loss and we know debit exercise widen. So we can rock and roll. Debit exercise widen goes together all the time. Mountain Dew, just do the do. Like Nike, just do it. Or when you're wide, you need to exercise. We said the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So there's 30 points to be made or lost. You spend seven, so you can make 23. We said our break even, we're going to use push. 150 minus seven, 153, and bearish. You have my guarantee that whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. So those are the eight things we've got to be able to do on a spread. All right, so the other uh, advanced option strategy I want to share with you this evening is a straddle. And there are four test questions about a straddle. You know, can you identify a straddle? Even if that wasn't a test question, I just told you it is. But even if it wasn't, it is. If you can't identify it again, you don't know what to do. So you got to be able to identify the position. So we'll talk about that. A straddle with different strike prices is called a combination. You wouldn't do anything different. We have to be able to calculate the break-evens. Straddles are the only one where we're going to have two break-evens. We're going to have an upside break-even and a downside break-even. We have to determine where the straddle is profitable. You know, where do we want the market price in relationship to the break-evens? And we have another memory aid device called Silo. Silo is to remind us short inside, long outside. If it is a short straddle, we're going to want the market price to be in between our two break-evens. I'm going to show this to you in just a little bit. If it's a long straddle, we're going to want it outside of our two break-evens. And then our last thing we got to be able to do on the test is say, when would you use a straddle? Well, you buy a straddle when you're expecting volatility, but direction's uncertain. We'll be talking about that. And you sell a straddle or short a straddle when you think the stock's going to stay within the trading range. All right, well, here we go. Let's do our four things. So test question number one is, can you identify this as a straddle? 
So here, what I'm straddling is the strike price at 150. That's why it's called a straddle. Here, I'm buying volatility. You're either buying volatility or you're selling volatility. Here, I don't know whether Apple's going up or Apple's going down. If I thought it was going up, I would buy the call. And if I thought it was going down, I'd buy the put. So now I simply buy both. Now, test question number one, it's a straddle. Test question number two, can you calculate the break evens? And the way you do that is you take the strike price, XP means strike price, and you add the total premium to get the upside break even. So boom. Okay, so what is the strike price here? 150. And what is the total premium? It's nine. And so our upside break even, our upside break even is going to be 159. You know, if I really wanted to teach you options, I'd make you buy one. And once you were out of pocket, you'd figure out pretty quickly how this game works. So we have our upside break even, and then we're going to get our downside break even. Oh, by the way, once you get the menu done, then you can think about it. You know, if I buy the stock at 150, which I have a choice to do, and I sell at 159, I'd make nine points. I spent nine points. I break even. Nobody does things to break even. You know, people do things to make money. All right. So my downside break even, whoop, strike price minus total premium. So put that there, strike price minus total premium equals our downside break even. And that's going to be 141, so 150 minus 9 equals 141. Again, we have two break-evens. Let's put that there. Uh, and again, uh, we, you know, think about it after we get the menu done. So if I uh, buy the stock at 141 and stick it to somebody at 150, I'd make nine points. I spent nine points. Remember, contact specifications. That's a choice to buy Apple at 150 and a choice to sell Apple at 150. So we've identified it. We've determined the break-evens. Third thing, where is it profitable? Where is it profitable? Remember, what was our memory aid device for determining profitability in a straddle? What was our memory aid device for determining profitability in a straddle silo silo yeah short inside long outside so we want the apple to be above 159 or below 141. where we don't want the apple is in between those two numbers you know, we have long straddles and we have short straddles. Last test question is when do we buy a straddle? So what is our expectation here? If we, yeah, yeah. We expect Apple to go way up or way down. I'm not sure if these virtual headsets, what are they, $3,500? I mean, I don't know. Well, you know, I think what well, maybe people will pay $3,500 for those things and maybe they're going to really kill it. And so I buy the call, but I go, yeah, maybe not. Maybe people don't buy the headsets. Well, the other thing goes down. So, you know, I don't think Apple's going to stay within this trading range. I think it's going to move. Now, every strategy, every strategy has its opposite. So we have long straddles. That means we have short straddles, right? So we have both versions of this. All right, so let's look at a short straddle. So here's our short straddle. We said the first thing we got to do is identify it. It's a short straddle. What's our second thing? We got to be able to calculate the break evens. How do we calculate break evens in straddles? How do we calculate break evens in straddles? We combine the premiums. 
And we add it to the call. To the upside. And we subtract it from the put. Downside. Yeah, we got two. It's the only one we got two on our series seven, right? Okay, so we a uh, third thing. We have to know where is it profitable? What's our memory aid device for profitability? What is our memory aid device for profitability? Silo, short inside, long outside. So in a short straddle, uh, anybody see a potential problem with a short straddle? I mean, this sounds pretty seductive, Jeffrey. Do you think Apple is going to stay between 159 and 141 between now and expiration in March? Yeah. You go, yeah, that's how it's, I've got 80 and I'll go for it. Uh, anybody see a potential problem? The potential problem here, Jeffrey. Upside loss forever. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right. So, you know, the problem with a short straddle is if you're wrong, it goes outside the break even. And how far outside the break even? Those are Jeffrey's tears, right? How far out of that can go? On the downside, you can't lose everything, but on the upside, don't overthink it. So short, so short, short, short straddles. Now, straddles uh, is just basically you're going short. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And again, what you're selling here is the volatility, your, your trading range. So four test questions. Can you identify a straddle and you calculate the break evens? Can you determine where it's profitable? You know, when do you use it? Those are our four. I think straddles are pretty straightforward as a uh, test issue on your Series 7. All right. So we said every strategy has its opposite. So here it is uh, together. Here are these two straddles that we've been looking at, right? We said every strategy has its opposite. And it looks like Dean needs to fix his uh, slide here. Right. We're not straddling 130. We're straddling what? 150 is what we're straddling. So what are our four test questions about straddles? Can we identify the straddle? Can we calculate the break-evens? Uh, the break-evens. There's two break-evens. There's an upside break-even and a downside break-even. We said our upside break-even is 159. That is our upside break even. And we have a downside break even. It's the same break even whether you're long or short. It doesn't matter where you want it in relationship to that break even. So we have two break evens. Our third test question where is it profitable? And we said if you're long the straddle, if you're long the straddle, you want it to be above 159 or below 141, silo. And we said, if you're short the straddle, you want it in between these two numbers. We have a memory aid device for that. What was our memory aid device? Silo. Silo, short inside, long outside. And then we said, you're either buying or selling volatility. So here you're buying the volatility and straddle. Like maybe I think, okay, the company's gonna get a new CEO and he's either gonna fix the problems or he's not. So I don't care if he fixes the problems or not, because if he fixes it, the stock goes up and I buy a call. If he doesn't fix the problems, the stock goes down and I buy a put. I don't care as long as it moves. I got a built-in mistake on one of these legs, uh, or maybe it's a court case. And I say, you know, the company, if they win the legal case, the court case, the stock goes up. And I lose the court case, the stock goes down. So test question, we buy a straddle when we're expecting volatility, but direction's uncertain. And then we sell straddles when we expect it to stay within the trading range. I would know that short straddles subject investors to unlimited risk because remember, you have this short call there and that could blow up on you. All right, let's try a test prep question. ABC Corporation is in litigation over patent infringement. Your customer believes that if ABC prevails in the litigation, ABC stock will move much higher. And if ABC loses in litigation, ABC stock will move much lower. He's not sure of which outcome. What option strategy might you recommend? Yeah. 
what option strategy might you recommend? So you've got you've got major volatility potential up on the upside and on the downside. There you go. So what would you do? So then you're then you're doing a straddle and you yep. want it to be. So uh, which straddle are you doing? No, you, want, you want to be long. You want to do the long straddle. Indeed. The answer is C's and Charlie. The answer is C's and Charlie, right? Because you buy a straddle when you're expecting volatility, but direction is uncertain. So we're testing you there on when do you use a straddle? We said there's four things. Can you identify it? Can you calculate the break-evens? Can you determine where it's profitable? Okay, well, ladies and gents, I, I never know in these evenings, as usually I'm teaching a class, it's like four days. It's not an evening class. And I think we've been at a couple hours. Um, would you like to demonstrate your prowess or lack thereof on a practice spread, or would you just like to call it a night? I want to practice it. Okay, so here you go. Here's your first practice. When you're done, <laughs> put in the chat. I want you to identify it. I'll help you out. It's a spread. And once you've identified it, I want to know credit or debit, expire or exercise, narrow or widen, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. When you get that done, then put that in chat. Yeah, Ray, it's, it, thank you so much, Ray. And if, if you don't want to practice, that's fine. You can call it a night. I have two that I'm going to let you practice on. So if you want to practice, hang out. I got two to show you as practice. And then, you know, we're done, done for the evening. So... Uh, I feel sorry about <laughs> Kavita. I mean, oh my goodness, I feel so bad. She won the draw and I told you the thing was messed up. So I I didn't see her pack back in here. I'll have to, you know, make it up to her. What do you think? You think if I just tell her I'll tutor her on it, that would be okay? What do you think she'd be still mad? I mean, I'll say, please forgive me. But it, by the way, you guys paid uh, 60 bucks and she got it for free. So I think we should take care of our paid customers first, right? <laughs> So when you're done, just put done in the chat and then we'll give people, when I see a few dones there, we'll work it together and see if you got it right. Do, 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 Okay, straddle or spread? Is it a straddle or is it a spread? Spread. It is a spread. You're long and short the same type of contract. Is it debit or credit? Debit. Credit. And it's credit. The 11 is money in, the three is money out. This is a credit spread. We got more money in than out. Short, correct. All right, so this is a credit spread, right? That's 11 in. Let me get out my annotation tool. You know, I was tutoring somebody, Jeffrey, one time, and she was the chief technology officer of this company. And I, you know, when she gets something wrong, I go, eh, yep. you no, know, it's a joke. And then, boy, I, I didn't realize that she didn't think that was funny because the boy, then the following week, I went, eh, and she just went off on me. She oh. goes, Dean, that is the rudest thing I've ever heard. You know, and if it was technology, I'd be in you all day long. And, and, and. I go, oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, some people, when you're studying, you can be kind of fragile. You know, so this is indeed an eight-point credit spread. Okay, once we get credit, right, Madison, we can rock and roll. Yeah. Because once we get credit, we go credit expire narrow. And we got our gain, which is eight points, right? And we said that the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. Mm -hmm. 
In this case, that's 15 points. And so that means you can lose seven. Right? Again, test taking trick, those two numbers have to add up to 15. Are we going to use cow or push for the break even? Wait, did I do something wrong? Because I have, I put 11 minus three, which would be the eight. So that would be the. Well, that's a credit though, right? It's a credit of eight because the 11 is money in and the three is money out. So when we net those two, that is a credit of eight. Max gain. I did that backwards. Yeah, remember, whenever we collect money, that's our best case scenario is we get to keep it, right? So 220 or higher is our ceiling here. 220 or higher, the put contracts expire. I go neener, 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 and I keep the money, right? The, by the way, the put spreads are the ones that are kind of nasty. That's why I'm, I put in there. A lot of people think, you know, credit means bearish. It does not. You know, so, you know, there's our max gain. But, you know, I'm smart enough to know that, gee, if all I do is that put, you know, if I just did the put, Jeffrey, at 11, somebody could stick it to me at 220. So I think, well, you know what? I'll buy that 245 just in case somebody sticks it to me. I can stick it to the next guy. I don't want to do that. I don't want the contracts to be exercised. But, hey, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's good to have some insurance there on the downside. So what I did here is I'm going to take part of my money. And I'm going to buy that lower strike put just in case, in case it blows up and somebody sticks it to me, I can stick it to what? The yeah. next guy. I had a young lady and she goes, Dean, this is the most unchristian thing I've ever heard of. I would never stick it to anybody. <laughs> I said, well, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you know, right. If that happens, that would be a seven point loss. Okay. So are we going to use cow or push? Cow or push? Push. Break even. Yeah, we're going to use push, and that stands for put, put, subtract from higher. So we're going to take the higher strike, which in this case is 220. We're going to subtract the net premium, which in this case is eight, mm -hmm. and we get our break even of 212. And then the last thing we got to do is determine bullish or bearish. Bullish. This is bullish. Yeah, you are correct. How did you determine that this was bullish? The big 11 in. Yeah, it's a short put, right? Right on. So it is uh, bullish. Okay. How'd you do? Did you do okay on that one? Yeah. You want to do another one or you want to call it a night? I'm down. All right. This is our last one. Our last one. <laughs> okay. When you get it done, put in the chat done. And then we'll call it a night. Don't hate the eight. You do these eight things, you got my guarantee that whatever they want to know on your series seven, you have the answer. Anybody done yet? Kind of. Okay, kind of. All right. Anybody else? Ready to go through it? Need a minute? Go through it. Does that mean need a minute or are you ready to roll? Okay. So is it a straddle or is it a spread? It's a spread. Yeah, it's a spread. We're long and short, the same type of contract. It's a spread. Is it a debit or a credit? A debit. 
it's a debit. You got more money out than in, right? You got eight in, you got 17 out. And so this is a debit spread. Now, once you get that, you can rock and roll. Because once you get debit, you know it's exercise white. Now, often does that go together? All the time. All the time. And you know your loss. And uh, let's see if Dean can do the arithmetic. It looks like my loss is the nine points I spent. Mm -hmm. Right? So, boom. And we said the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. 11. Right? So, right on. So, the gain is going to be 11. Now, after you get the menu done, then you can think about it. Don't think about it until you get the menu done. But, you know, if I buy the stock at 380, which I have a choice to do, and I sell the stock at 400, which I'm obliged to do, I make 20 points. But I spent nine to get rolling. So I make 11. Are we going to use cow or push for our break even? Cow. So we're going to take 380, the lower strike. We're going to add the net premium to get our break even of 391. And then the last thing we got to do is determine if it's bullish or bearish. How do we determine whether it's bullish or bearish? Premium. Now, do we add? Do we add the gain or the loss to the break even? No, we don't do anything. We're just getting the break even of 391, but it's the net premium. Whatever the net premium is, doesn't matter whether it's a debit or credit, we're adding the net premium. So in this case, the net premium is a debit, but it doesn't matter. whether If that was a credit, we would still add that. We add whatever that net number is to get our break even. Right, so that's why I meant by absolute value. And then our last thing, bullish or bearish, is this bullish or bearish? Bullish. You are correct. And that means we want the stock to be above 391. Anywhere above 391, we're one. Now, how did you determine it's bullish? You could have used because you're long the lower strike, or you should know that the larger premium dominates the position, and a lower strike call is always going to be the dominant leg. So long call, this is bullish. So those are the eight things you need to know about a spread. If you know those eight things, whatever they want to know on your exam, you have the answer. All right. So we are concluded our multiple option strategies. Uh, remember, inch by inch, advanced options are essential. Yard by yard, advanced options are hard. Do you have any other questions for me this evening about uh, straddles or spreads? No, you said this is going to be a replay on the yeah, channel. That sure will be. This will be a replay. And, uh, you know, uh, by the way, we, you know, I told you, I, I'm not sure on this timing, but what we do, we, I think we did, what is it, two hours? Oh, my God. You know, so um, maybe I'll try. I'm still trying to figure out the timing for these evening Thank classes. Thank you for your time. Oh, Jeffrey, you're welcome. What I think what I'll probably do is maybe separate the straddles or something. But, you know, that's what I do. I don't do, you know, I get... You know, I never knew I had haters until I got on social media, but um, I do long stuff. So, you know, you know, what can I tell you? It's a couple hours. It is what it is, right? So, uh, Cynthia, I don't know how Cynthia got kicked out of the room. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. You're welcome. So, like Thanks. I say, be looking for the replay. I think somebody somebody said they booked tutoring for next week. Was that you, That's Jeff? That's me, Jeff. I want to talk with you for just three minutes. If okay, we cool. cool. I... Now, remember, you're in an open format here, so... Uh, you know, be careful what, you know, I'm sure you're not going to say anything untoward, but, uh, you know, you might want to wait till people check out. <laughs> what do you got? Yeah, no, I just wanted to give you my story. So yeah. um, I just came across you here recently. So, um, yeah, let me just hit the pause. You're welcome, everybody. I want to, uh, Jeffrey, just real quick here before you get started. Yeah, I just want to uh, kill the recording because we don't want people knowing your personal business. So there you go. Uh, let me 